Hey guys, welcome back to 10 out of 10. This video for Thoughtful Thursdays will be a little different from my other ones. I'm actually gonna be talking about something more personal. It's about my vegetarian journey, specifically pescatarian, but we'll get into that later on. This is actually one of the suggestive submissions from our video forms. So if you have a video idea for us, click the link in the description for the Google Forms um, and you guys can suggest video ideas and title ideas for us to do in the future. I also put out a question on our Instagram story last week about common questions you guys could have or do have about pescatarianism. And one of them was, what is pescatarianism and why did you choose to do that? So I just want to get it straight. I'm going to be looking at my notes, by the way. That's why I keep looking that way. But I want to get it straight, guys, that there are different forms of vegetarianism. Lacto-vegetarian, lacto-ovo-vegetarian, there's pescatarian, there's vegan, etc. So pescatarianism can also be called pesco-vegetarianism, which basically means a vegetarian diet consisting of seafoods only as the meat source. Um, so yeah, I became pescatarian um, in 2017. It started off as a Lenten offering um, in 2017. During Lent, I just gave up meat in general. But on Fridays, you can eat fish. So I just continued that after Lent. Um, the reason why I did that was because because at the time I actually didn't like chicken a lot. My family actually ate chicken a lot before so I would have chicken like all the time. Anywhere we would go out there's chicken and I don't know I just didn't want to eat chicken anymore. I just didn't like it. Um, so then when I gave it up for Lent, I was like, okay, I think I can do this. So I just gave it up and I became pescatarian and also because I live at home and I don't cook myself It's easier for my mom to cook a fish alternative than just go completely vegan or vegetarian So yeah, that was in 2017 and I'm still pescatarian today There were some difficulties in the beginning because I didn't want to just go completely off me because I wanted to ease myself into the lifestyle rather than just restricting myself which I would probably hate if I did that so I would suggest if you are trying to think of cutting back on your red meats that's even a great step if you just want to reduce your meat intake to like once a month you know, twice a month. Reducing your red meat intake can also help the environment as well. So even just reducing that and not going cold turkey is also a great idea. Okay, pause real quick. I'm just gonna show you guys currently what I've been eating the last week or actually what I got to film because sometimes I forgot. <laughs> and they're mostly pastas. I'll show you guys. So this is my meal and I usually just put like balsamic on top. And it's a cold salad. We usually have it with the, the the stringy type of pasta, but today it's the bow ties, so yeah. This is a soup my mom made. It's kind of just eyeballed. She got some noodles, made a vegetable broth, put some tofu in it, and it was really good. I've just been eating instant noodles for the past like couple of days because I bought it and my mom hated that I bought it. But I don't know, sometimes I just don't want to eat healthy. I just have cravings so this is what i've been eating this is a spicy version of the pancit canton and i just don't put in the fat part i just have the soy sauce and then the seasoning so before the pandemic i actually went out a lot and ate some people might be like oh what do you eat when you're out with your friends who aren't pescatarian these are just clips that i have there's always options for vegetarians or fish alternatives you just gotta look at the menu beforehand so my parents now are actually pescatarian. They've started it in 2018 when the documentary The Game Changers came out on Netflix. They watched that and they realized that, you know what, for our health, since they are, they are a little bit older, they want to be able to take care of themselves and to have strong muscles. And they decided that that was best for them at, at that time. And yeah, I, I would ask them, like, do you guys notice a difference from 
being on red meats or like poultry to just having a pescatarian or a vegetarian diet and they they really do they say that they have more energy and they don't feel lethargic after having a meal so yeah like i would say try it but don't overdo it right like there's always extremists at different ends of the spectrum um but just do what's best for your body and just feel it out to see what you're comfortable with and what your body likes and dislikes and on top of being a pescatarian um i'm also lactose intolerant um i know that that sucks because i love cheese right actually around the time that i decided to be pescatarian i started to have um lactose intolerance i also think it's because i work at starbucks and i'm always around milk so like on my breaks i would just have a latte or something that includes dairy and um i grew up with one percent milk but at starbucks i would try switching to non-fat milk and then i started to switch to lactose free milk and then to soy milk and now i only drink plant-based milks and my family only drinks plant-based milks as well my parents like almond milk and i like oat milk and then at starbucks i get soy and sometimes oat milk too so now my family has a pescatarian diet and also we drink plant-based milk which i highly encourage plant-based milk is really good for the environment um i wouldn't say almond milk is the best choice though and sometimes soy is bad for you so yeah for soy sometimes it's not that good for you some people stay away from it because of the estrogen levels but um i still like it i like soy i get it all the time when i'm at starbucks so i get that soy uh if you go to costco they have these fortified soy um like things it's fortified soy and it tastes different from the ones at starbucks really good um i also don't think almond milk is that good because almond milk to produce almonds it takes bees and bees are slowly dying off and bees are an essential part in creating almond trees and creating almond milk it just you know requires a lot more bee labor and yeah i say oat milk but yeah i'm just gonna say oat milk is really good for me right now like you can make it at home too another question that came in for the instagram stories was do you have any cravings for me sometimes i do crave bacon like and also turkey bacon i liked a lot like my mom makes a vegetarian version of karakare and like vegetarian versions of filipino dishes and i like them a lot but my parents like they grew up with like the authentic one right like with the meat so with it being substituted with like a fish they like it but they don't like love it like they did one time i got tricked into eating chicken and my stomach was hurting like when i say hurting i, I mean like there was like a hole in my stomach i felt cold and i felt sick and my stomach felt like there was a hole in it i don't want to eat it i don't want to eat chicken I, that was by accident you know if you guys want to talk about this topic with me more you guys can comment down below or you can dm me directly i'll leave my instagram link in the description as well as the group's instagram so in the description, I'll have some resources for Instagram accounts for you guys to follow, some articles to read, and also Netflix documentaries and films to watch um, for your leisure. So I hope you guys like this chit chat talk with me on my personal journey as a pescatarian. I also want to start talking about minimalism and zero waste um, or low impact. Um, that is something I'm also very interested in so I can talk about that in future videos. Thank you guys for listening I hope you guys got something out of it. Thank you guys and I'll see you next time. Bye